you might have heard DevOps and or AWS sometimes in your career or during studies. Um, you got curious, that's why you're here. Um, or just simply you want to know more about DevOps and uh, AWS. Or the most common, um, wala kayong ginagawa at this hour, so you opt to go here in the webinar. Either way, you come at the right moment. So, uh, because today we're all gonna talk about DevOps and AWS, their fundamentals, their all introductions, uh, basically a, a basic introduction of what DevOps and AWS is, are and how it all transforms the modern world of IT. So, uh, let's dive in and, uh, you know, Let's see. So this webinar will talk about two, two topics, DevOps and AWS. So we're all gonna first talk about DevOps and later on the AWS cloud. So uh, just um, a hint, this is all about DevOps fundamentals, an introduction only. So if um, it type in Google or so YouTube, um, search about DevOps, you're gonna see a bunch a whole, um, a lot of information, uh, videos that uh, talks about DevOps. Okay? Um, they have their own interpretation or explanation of how DevOps works. But on this webinar, we're just gonna talk about the basic fundamentals. So if we're all gonna narrow down those information or those details about what DevOps, if you're gonna see all over the net, narrow it down, we're gonna have the basic information about it. So yun yung pag-uusapan natin today. And um, this may be an, um, something new, especially to students, or a refresher for those uh, professionals that are already you know, um, applying the DevOps in their work. And uh, totally new information for those na um, haven't experienced yet DevOps. So, um, we are a diverse community in this uh, webinar today, so I hope that this will be like um, helpful to everyone, to all the participants. Okay, so simulan na natin. Let me first introduce myself as a speaker for this afternoon, um, so you know who I'm, who you're talking with. So yeah, my name is Mark Anthony Velasco. I'm currently a Cloud and Systems Engineer Level 2 at uh, NTT Singapore Solutions private uh, limited here in Singapore. I've been working um, here for yeah two years already and running. I'm also um, an appointed committee head in uh, ICPEP Singapore chapter. My previous work was a system administrator or platform engineer in one of the private company um, along Edsa Mandaluyong there in Philippines. The name of the company is Digital Room Philippines. I was uh, a BS Engineering graduate, batch 2017, at uh, Technological Institute of the Philippines, Manila. So, mga TIPNs ngayon na uh, uh, nandito sa webinar. Uh, shout out sa inyo. Yeah, so, um, basically, de this DevOps uh, culture, this DevOps really changed my life because uh, on an early, early career, I'm already exposed to it. Um, when I joined the uh, digital room after my graduation, um, they're already practicing DevOps. So I didn't get a chance to like uh, explore other fields, um, other um, application of computer engineering, DevOps na derecho ako. And DevOps is also one way for me to land a job here in Singapore because when I, uh, when I got here, uh, DevOps pa rin yung, yung role ko. Um, nga lang, it's a cloud, specifically a cloud or systems engineer. So I've, um, I've, I work in digital room for half and ha uh, one and a half year, right after my graduation, and then two years here in Singapore. So running three years, running four years now. Dito, I mean, in apply in DevOps, um, and uh, today I'm gonna share to you like how how it's uh, being applied to the modern world. Okay, most especially, kung paano ina apply ang DevOps dito sa Singapore. So for people in the Philippines, you're gonna you know um, benefit into this this topic. So uh, it will be very exciting. Okay. And then I have a LinkedIn profile. You can check uh, my professional history. So here, or you can follow my Facebook or Instagram account. 
Pero pag professional, it's nice to link in. All right? And by the way, this, uh, this webinar is uh, sponsored by ICPEP Singapore and also the national ICPEP. Um, okay, so before we completely start, let's just do a quick um, notes or instruction for this webinar. So um, today's May 30, 1 p.m. Philippine Singapore time. Um, the start of our webinar. So, Philippine and Singapore has no time difference. So, 1 p.m. sa amin, 1 p.m. din dyan sa inyo, supposedly. This will be a two-hour session with 10-minute break. Everyone should be on mute um, except me, the speaker. So, if you have like a question at the middle of the session or webinar, you can park it at the moment or take note of those because um, we're going to have a Q&A Q&A in every topic, after topic. So we have two topics. So we have DevOps and AWS. Um, every after those topics, we're gonna have a Q&A, right? Um, recordings and slides will all gonna be shared after this session. So watch out for those. And for more information, you can go to our um, official ICPEP Singapore website. All right. Agenda. Agenda for DevOps fundamentals. First, we're going to talk about DevOps story. Okay, I'm going to share you a, a short story about DevOps. We're also going to talk about the traditional development and operations. And the very topic of this session, what is DevOps? The three stages conversation. The roadmap, uh, what are the benefits of DevOps? job opportunities, testaments, and lastly, the Q&A. All right, so let's get started. Okay, DevOps story. Um, like I said, I'm gonna share you a, a story of how uh, DevOps is being applied to a company. First, I'm gonna uh, introduce to you Christian. Say hi, Christian. So Christian is Okay, here you go. So Christian is a dev. He's, he's a developer in a company, in a private company. And then, meet Paolo. So lalaki siya, uh, mukha lang siyang babae, he's a long hair. So he's a long hair guy. His role is DevOps. Both of them are working in a private company. If you can notice, si Dev ay may hawak na laptop at may cloud sa likod niya. Si Ops naman or si Paolo naman is merong server sa tabi niya. Okay, so I'm um, magkukwento ako about them. So for those students, okay, kapag pumasok kayo, kapag na graduate, gumraduate na kayo and uh, nag-apply kayo sa isang company, most likely IT company, um, you're gonna notice that uh, in an IT department or IT, IT um, in organization, hindi mawawala si developers in operations, okay? Just to give you a, uh, a brief background of what they do, si Dev, uh, obviously, a um, software engineer or nag develop ng mga um, applications or um, if websites naman, um, PHP or HTML websites ng kanilang company. Okay? And si Ops naman, right, si Ops naman ang bahala or nag-maintain, nag-administer at nag-monitor ng mga servers kung saan naka-host ng application or website ng company nyo. Okay? So, on a traditional development on operations, bago pa na uso yung DevOps, meron mo ng traditional or paano nag-work ang isang, um, you know, isang basic company or isang um, IT company or isang business bago nila in-apply yung DevOps. So, magkahiwalay. Magkahiwalay si Dev and si Ops. Okay? So, may hawak si Dev. May hawak si Christian. Hawak niya ay isang box. So this box represents his application. May it be a brand new application or an update on his existing application. So may hawak si Dev, uh, si Dev or si Christian. And may mapapansin ka yung wall of confusion sa pagitan nila. So kapag si Dev ay nagbato or nagpasa ng application kay Ops, it equates daw into a disaster or a time bomb. 
bakit? Paano nangyari yun? Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi lang basta-basta pinasa ni uh, ni Christian yung application niya kay Ops. Tumawid siya sa wall of confusion. Ito yung, ito yung napansin ng sa isang traditional development and operation. Say for example, kapag si Dev ay nag-update uh, nag ng isang e-commerce sites nila, let's say sa e-commerce sites nila merong um, merong sale or may bago silang promotion or merong holiday at kailangan nila palitan yung banner or yung um, yung layout ng website nila. So, kailangan mag-update ni Dev. So, itetest muna ni QA yun. Itetest ni QA uh, bago siya ipasa sa production. So, kapag na may tinatawag tayo na sign-off. So, kapag na-sign-off yung test, ibig sabihin good to go. O pwede na siyang i-apply sa production. Pag sinabi naman production, yun na yung um, naka-expose sa mga customers or yung nakikita na ng customers outside the real world. So here goes. Um, pinasa na ni Christian yung updated application niya or let's say website, up updated website layout niya kay Ops. Napasa na or nakuha na ni Ops yung uh, application or yung updates at ipupush niya sa production. Kaso pagdating sa production, itetest ulit ni QA yun. Makikita ni QA na oh, basag yung banner hindi nakikita yung update or napakabagal ng website after na update. Anong nangyari? So, babalikan nila si Ops. Titignan ni Ops at i-declare ni Ops, hey, walang, walang issue sa amin kasi pinush namin ng tama yung production nyo, ay yung, yung update nyo. Nakipe dev yun. Si dev ay may kasalanan nun. So, pupunta naman ngayon ang CC kay dev. Hey, hindi, hindi, wala sa amin ang problema kasi tinest naman dito sa developer Tines naman siya sa machine go, okay naman. Tines naman sa dev, dev uh, environment, okay naman. Bakit nagkaganon? So this is where the wall of confusion will come in. Okay, the, the, the thicker the wall of confusion, the harder it will be resolved. Kaya merong mga um, companies or IT department na nire-reconstruct nila yung um, organization nila to minimize this wall of confusion. Pero minimize ha, hindi siya totally eliminate. Kasi during traditional days, wala pang, there's no way to eliminate the confusion. So, no matter how thick or how thin the wall of confusion is, meron pa rin siyang um, uh, percentage or margin of error. Okay? So that was the traditional development and operation dates. So later, we're gonna find out kung um, paano papasok sa picture ang DevOps? Uh, wait, medyo may hindi naka-mute. Sorry. Okay, so mapapansin nyo sa next slide isang elepante at may mga tao. So this is um, what I call the parable of the blind man and elephant. Um, I chose this parable as a best analogy for DevOps. Okay? I-explain ko sa inyo ang paano, anong kinalaman ng elepante sa DevOps. Um, have you heard about the parable of the blind man and the elephant? So if hindi, um, just to give you an idea, the, bar the parable of the blind man and elephant actually originated in ancient India. Okay? So merong moral story about this. Um, short explanation about it is that uh, it is a story of a group of blind men so, mga bulag sila who have never came across an elephant before. So, siguro nung pinanganak sila, hindi, hindi pa sila nakakakita ng elepante kahit kailan. So, they were deployed and pinalapit sila sa mga ele sa elepante. And uh, they were asked to learn and conceptualize what the elephant looks like by just touching it, smelling it, or feeling it or using all the remaining senses aside from eyesight kasi nga wala sila nun. Um, sorry, mayroong, mayroong background noise. Okay, going back. So again, there are four blind men who were asked to describe what elephants look like. What an elephant looks like and um, by just touching it. Okay? So each blind man 
should feel different part of the elephant's body by only one part. So kung saan ka nakapwesto, doon mo lang siya i-describe. So may isang blind man dito na nasa task ni elephant. Meron naman sa batok niya, sa, sa ibabaw, meron naman sa tenga, at meron sa, uh, sa, sa behind or sa buntok ni elephant. Okay. Then after that, uh, they are then been asked to describe and identify again what an elephant looks like based on their limited experience and their own description of the elephant out of their own perspective. Okay? So imagine mo, isang, isang, isang kang bulag, um, pinalapit ka sa elepante, at isang parte lang na elepante ang, kailang, ang, ang pwede kang um, ma-expose at later on ipapa-explain sa'yo. But the good thing is that they are all um, scattered or spread out um, around the elephant. So may kanya-kanya silang way on how to describe an elephant. And uh, pwede silang kumuha na isang graphic artist or um, sketch artist at ipapadescribe nila yan. Tapos papadrawing sa kanila, papadrawing nila sa graphic artist kung ano ba talaga yung elefante. So in this scenario, kung i-associate ko siya sa DevOps, this scenario, the elephant can be considered as a delivery life cycle or a DevOps. Okay? So ang mga bulag naman, ang mga traditional um, workforce or traditional IT members. So kapag inintroduce natin ang DevOps sa nila, of course, at first, hindi nila alam kung anong DevOps. So kapag introduce um, on their own perspective, ma-identify nila kung ano ba yung DevOps. See, for example, ito si Kuya na nasa harap ng elepante. Isa siyang um, executive ng isang company, may ari ng isang company. So inintroduce namin sa kanya ang DevOps. So having his own experience as an executive, as a business owner, may interpret niya ang DevOps on his own perspective. So kung executive ka tapos inintroduce sa'yo ang isang DevOps, may isip mo, oh, okay, maganda to. Um, may mga available pa ng tools or may mga available pa ng concepts si DevOps na pwede namin magamit sa company. Kikita ako dito, bibilis ang production ko. Pwede ko tong um, ituro sa kanila or pwede ko tong i, um, sabihin sa team ko or sa workforce ko na gamitin ng DevOps. So, sa perspective ni executive, ang iniisip niya is profit tsaka um, faster productivity. Yun ang perspective niya kay DevOps. Si Kuya naman na nasa taas ni Elephant, let's say, isa siyang team lead. Okay? Then, inintroduce natin sa kanya si DevOps. So, sa perspective niya bilang isang team lead or tech lead, ang may isip niya kung paano ang technicalities ng DevOps. At on that way, ma-apply niya yun sa trabaho niya as a team lead, pwede niya sabihan, sabihin si, um, si um, professionals or, or si engineer or mga practitioner, uy, meron tayong bagong DevOps dito. So ito yung mga technicalities niya na maaari natin i-apply. Gawin na natin. As a lead, siya ang mag-lead ng DevOps journey nila. Sa kanya, on, on his own perspective. Hindi, hindi niya kailangan maging executive para isipin ang um, kita or profit pag nag-DevOps na kasi may sarili siyang prospe uh, perspective ng DevOps. And then, these two guys can be associated as engineers or professionals or practitioners talagang doing hands-on sa DevOps. So before they're doing traditional um, DevOps, pwede siyang traditional dev uh, lang or software engineer or ops lang na hindi pa alam ang DevOps. Pero pag introduce natin sa kanya ang DevOps, from his own perspective, maintindihan niya kung ano ang DevOps, which is may it be um, sila mismo yung first hand na gumagamit ng DevOps tools na mapapabilis ang mga trabaho nila kung dati inaabot ng siyam-siyam ang mga servers nila, server provisioner, kapag inintroduce or ginamit na nila ang DevOps, um, mapapabilis yung trabaho nila. Okay? So kapag tinanong mo silang mga bumubuo ng team after we introduce DevOps, then they can explain, they can confidently explain what DevOps is. So far, so good. They can say, na, hey, it's a DevOps, it's a DevOps, it's a DevOps, it's a DevOps. Pwede na nilang ma-explain kung ano ang DevOps. Again, uh, also like what I've said, if pupunta kayo sa web sa, sa, sa Google or sa YouTube, you can encounter a lot of explanation or description of what DevOps is. 
It can be a collaboration of dev and ops. It can be uh, automation. It can be infrastructure at the code, switches, so many things. But again, the, uh, the objective of this um, webinar is to narrow down all of those technical information to come up with a basic uh, description of what DevOps is. So let's find out. DevOps. So meron na akong um, united information. Isa isa natin, I -i decipher natin, chop chopin natin kung ano ba talaga to. Sabi niya, DevOps is an integ uh, or integrates developers and operation teams in order to improve collaboration and productivity by automating infrastructure, automating workflows, continuous measure, measuring application and performances. So himayin natin. So unang phrase, sinabi dito na integrates developers and operation teams. Okay, this one. Kung naalala nyo yung story ni Christian and ni Paolo, merong wall of confusion, di ba? So merong uh, magkahiwalay sila basically. Magkahiwalay sila ng trabaho. Hindi alam ni developers yung mga trabaho ni ops at hindi rin alam ni ops kung ano ba talaga yung mga ginagawa ni developers. Pero kapag in-embrace daw nila or kapag in-introduce daw sa kanila ang DevOps, it will integrate these two teams. Okay? Ano daw aim? Ano daw goal? Bakit pag-merge pag, pag ng dalawang um, team na to? It says on the next phrase, it, in order to improve collaboration and productivity. Basically, tatanggalin yung wall of confusion. Pag wala ng wall of confusion, therefore, there will be an improvement of collaboration and productivity. So in short, tinatanggal or nire-resolve ng DevOps yung wall of confusion or tinatanggal niya yung wall of confusion na na-create during the traditional days or traditional developer and operations. So yun daw yung goal. Yun daw yung aim in order to improve collaboration and productivity. Paano? Paano namin gagawin to? Oo nga, madaling sabihin, pero paano gagawin? That explains the next phrase. By automating infrastructure, okay, so, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, kung si Paolo naka-receive siya ng request na, Hey, Paolo, bigyan mo nga ako ng sampung servers. I need it fast. So, on, traditional, on, on a traditional um, organization, aabutan si Paolo ng um, five days or ten days para magawa yung sampung yun. So, isang araw, isang uh, server. Kasi hindi lang siya, hindi lang pagko-configure ang gagawin mo ay server. Paano kung kulang kayo ng server? So, kailangan mo pang umorder abroad kung wala sa local. So, abutin pa ng ilang araw din yun para ma-ship at dumating sa, sa location mo or sa data center mo. So, yun yung problema. Isa sa mga problema ng traditional. So, kung si DevOps daw, para daw mag-improve uh, yung productivity ng developers and operations, um, kailangan natin i-automate yung infrastructure niya. Pag sinabing automate, hindi na kailangan ng manual. Um, everything will be scripted or everything will be automatic. Um, on the next discussion natin about DevOps, may, ma, malalaman natin kung paano yung gagawin. Okay? But first, paano daw uh, mag-improve yung collaboration and productivity? Una is to improve or automate infrastructure. Second is automate workflows. So sa mga estudyante, workflows is um, like how, I mean the stages, kung paano na-develop, simula na-develop ang isang application hanggang ma-reach siya sa end user, which most likely are customers. So before, inaabot din ng siyam-siyam yun. So putulad nila Christian and Paolo, kapag may developer tapos dumaan uh, sa wall of confusion yung apps, hindi pa natatapos yun. So maaring magkaroon pa ng, alam mo yun, fix of bugs. Okay? And then uh, yung release, yung tinatawag na release or pag-deploy niya sa production ng updates ng let's say website or application, inaabot ng siyam-siyam or walang uuwi hanggat hindi nasa sign off or hindi maayos yung website. So yun, pinaabot din ng um, magdamag yun kapag, kapag traditional. But with DevOps daw, it can all be automated. Later, we're gonna find out how it gonna be. 
And lastly, continuously measuring application performances. So, hindi lang natatapos yun sa pag-automate ng infrastructure, sa pag-deploy um, ng updates ng application nyo or websites, pati rin yung monitoring ng application mo while it is running, while it's being used by the end user. Um, kailangan din, nakafocus din sa DevOps doon. Kung paano minimeasure, paano minimonitor, um, automatically or on a, on a much improved way. Okay? So, yun daw. Yun daw ang idea ni DevOps. Kung mapapansin nyo, hindi sinabi, hindi sinabi dito na isa siyang role. Isa siyang position to fill in in a company. Kasi hindi talaga siya isang um, position. DevOps is a culture. Okay? Isa siyang culture na ina-adapt ng uh, isang company to improve their IT performance, to improve their IT organization. So, kung, kung, kung titignan nyo rin may opening about DevOps engineers and uh, mga HR, well, I cannot blame them kung ganun yung idea nila. Uh, but the truth is, kung babalikan nyo yung um, the parable of blind men and the elephant, may mga kanya-kanya silang role, di ba? May kanya-kanya silang um, perception or interpretation of DevOps according to their role, according to their um, past experiences. So kung executive ka, and in the moment that in embrace mo yung DevOps, in-apply mo sa company mo, you yourself as an executive can be called a DevOps engineer. Kasi out of nowhere, nung panahon na traditional ka pa, but, uh, na but since I introduced na sa'yo yung DevOps, nalaman mo na yung benefit nun, nalaman mo na yun na it will improve your, um, your collaboration and productivity, nalaman mo na itong mga to, the executive doesn't necessarily um, need to understand the technicalities or how it how it can be worked on a technical perspective. But um, the moment na naintindihan niya or nakita niya yung benefit ni DevOps, he can be called a DevOps engineer with specifically his role as an executive. Same goes with the technical lead, kung technical lead ka at uh, in-embrace mo yung DevOps sa, mga, sa team mo, isa ka na rin DevOps engineer. Okay? So next, let's proceed to the next slide. Okay, so we have three stages of conversation. So, kung paano daw ba, paano daw ba siya nag-work? So, first is people, process, and products. Kung mapapansin niyo sa people, dalawa na sila, magkasama na sila, si Dev, si Dev, si Christian, and si Paolo. They are now being treated as one entity or a single stage sa DevOps. Hindi na sila magkahiwalay. Okay? And the next stage daw, is process. So the moment that na merge na si Dev and si Ops, they are doing shake hands or they understand each other, they are in sync, they are on the same page, then they're doing the stage or they are now in the second stage of DevOps. Make sense? And lastly, the product. Of course, kung ano yung mga na-produce ni people or ng mga uh, Dev, Dev and Ops sa pamamagitan ng uh, mas in sync process, then definitely we're gonna have a more productive out, uh, output or a more acceptable output. So dun daw natin makikita ang stages ng isang DevOps. Okay, so I have here, next is a roadmap. So a roadmap, uh, hindi ko alam kung nababasa niyo sobrang liit. Roadmap is paano ba maging DevOps? Paano ba? So okay, nakita, alam ko na yung uh, idea niya, alam ko na yung concept niya, alam ko na yung yung uh, definition niya kung ano ba yung DevOps, pero paano ba talaga maging DevOps? So, I found out here on the website um, a very good example of the roadmap. So, um, I can share the link. Ito yung link niya, but kung sa website, ito siya. Okay. Ito yung website. So, isa siyang ganito. Isa siyang mahabang um, parang roadmap nga. So, let's dive in. I Itignan natin kung ano ba talaga to. So una, para daw maging DevOps ka, mag-aral ka muna ng isang programming language. Okay. Mag-aral ka daw muna ng isang programming language. So kung isa kang isudyante at nag-aaral ka na ng computer or nag-pursuan ng computer engineering, basic na to. Hindi ka alis ng computer engineering um, program kung wala ka natutunan kahit isang programming language. And kung professional ka na, 
uh, pero traditional at gusto mong mag, uh, mag-evolve into DevOps, supposedly meron ka na dapat um, idea or meron ka na dapat programming uh, language background. May it be Python, Ruby, or C Sharp, C++, um, Java, anything. Basta ang gist lang nito is magkaroon ka na idea about um, programming algorithm, data structure, yung mga ganong concept. It doesn't matter what language you pick. The key is for you to get some programming language or knowledge. Okay. The next step to becoming a DevOps is to understand a different OS concept or operating system concept. May it be Linux or Windows. Basta maintindihan mo lang yung uh, mga ports, sockets, memory, storage, or a file system um, like NFS. Things, things like, uh, like those. Input-output management, those concepts uh, uh, that uh, revolves around operating system. Just have an idea of um, how those works. Um, if you have it, then you already passed the second stage or second uh, step of becoming a DevOps. Next though, next step though is to learn about managing servers. Okay, so for as an operating system perspective, like kung Linux ka, paano ba nag install ng mga flavors ni Linux? So get some uh, administration idea, especially on Linux. Mas, mas uh, mapipiga yung um, skills mo kapag uh, una mong ginamit ang Linux. Pick Ubuntu kung isang ang beginner. Kasi sa Ubuntu may option para magkaroon ka ng desktop or terminal lang. So, ayun. Managing servers, like check, checking the CPU or uh, checking the storage, what are the, the, the commands or what are the um, commands for installing patches, those things. Alam, kong, alam ko madaling sabihin, but again, everything can be learned um, from, from the basics. So, simulan nyo muna sa pinaka-basic ng mga bagay na to. And uh, you will be surprised na meron na palaking idea sa mga to. Next is network and security. Um, so dito napapasok yung mga DNS, OSI model. So kung meron kayong um, Cisco, Cisco subjects or Cisco courses, definitely na-encounter nyo na OSI model. So anything related about network, and security, paano ay protect firewalls, security groups, those things. Okay, have an idea of those. Um, then you'll be done with this fourth stage of uh, fourth step of becoming a DevOps. HTTP, what are the ports? Port 80, port 443, those things. All right. Next is to understand or know what is and how to set up different things on a server or an application like paano bang mag-install ng Apache sa isang Ubuntu server? Paano bang mag-install ng um, IIS sa isang Windows server? Paano ba i-install ang Nginx, Tomcat, those things na makakatulong sa'yo sa pag-develop uh, at the same time mag-run ng mga servers. So understand mo yun. So in this step or in this step, yeah, dapat, uh, dapat easy na sa ito or at least makakapag, uh, prog may progress ka na sa part na ito kasi meron ka ng basic thing. Meron ka na sa first four, first four steps, meron ka ng ganitong mga idea. So dapat hindi, na mahihira, hindi ka na mahihirapan sa fifth stage. Okay? Ang sinod daw na step is to learn infrastructure as a code. So, for this one, um, dito nyo na malalaman dapat na kinocode pala yung mga um, pag-spin up ng mga servers, especially sa cloud. Kung sa cloud, um, kailangan mo ng sampung servers. So, hindi mo na, although may option to manually spin up the servers, pero there's a, a better option which is to code it, to codify it. Example na lang si Terraform. Terraform is a DevOps tool and it's, an, it's also an automation tool. So ginagamit namin siya para hindi na hindi na mabaga o hindi na namin i-manual ang pag, uh, paggawa ng infrastructure. 
pag pag uh, ko configure na mga servers ano na lang siya ko code na lang namin let me give you an example let me share you an example of what um, a terraform looks looks like okay na ikita niyo ba do hold on alakian ko so see um hindi kayo makikita na gooey hindi siya gooey hindi siya drag and drop hindi siya click next next or uh, click okay isa siyang code okay isa siyang code since you have already a background of programming meron ka na ring background na OS so definitely uh, by this time pwede ka nang gumawa ng code para i I spin up mo yung whole infrastructure mo. Or meron ka ng idea kahit pa paano. Though, ang pagsusulat ng um, infrastructure as a code um, will take practice, takes time. But again, hindi ka naman basta susugod or hindi ka naman basta may expose dito sa code na to without learning the basics. Which are the first few steps on the DevOps roadmap. So, ayun. So, makikita nyo dito like IP addresses. Sinasabi ko na sa code na, hoy, kapag um, mag-spin up ako ng servers, kailangan ito yung IP. Ito yung CIC, uh, CIDR block. Okay? Ito yung mga IP addresses. Ito yung mga subnet. Sinasabi ko na sa ano yan, sa code. Ito yung magiging subnet niya. Ito yung magiging port. So, everything are codified. Hindi na ako magmamanual mag pagtatype pa doon sa, sa GUI na pag install ng mga servers. Okay, lahat ay nakakodify na. Good. So, yun yung sinasabi ng roadmap. Balik ko lang. Yun yung sinasabi ng roadmap. By this time, on the sixth, uh, sixth step ng roadmap, dapat daw maintindihan mo na kung paano daw mag-infrastructure as a code. Learn some CICD tools. CICD tools, magbe-benefit naman dito ang mga developers. Kung ang infrastructure as a code, magbe-benefit uh, magde uh, mag, uh, ang mga operations or ops. Dito naman sa CICD tools, ang magbe-benefit ang mga developers. Tulad ng sinabi ko, or tulad nung nakita natin sa um, DevOps description, it, uh, it, in, it in, improves workflows. So for developers, kung may devel na-develop ako or meron akong update sa website ko or sa application ko, imbis na abutin ng sham-sham yung pagpupush na sa production, gagamit ko lang si ICD or continuous improvement, continuous development tools para mas mapabilis yung pag-deploy ko ng application. Example nun, yung Apache, uh, Bamboo or Jenkins. Later, later makikita nyo yung mga iba pang klase ng CICD tools. So, sabi dito sa roadmap, intindihin mo daw yun. Okay. It doesn't necessarily na kung ops ka, i-skip mo to kasi pang, pang developers lang to, itong 7 step, no. Hindi naman siya in-specify na this is just for ops, this is just for uh, developers. Basically, kung gusto mo talaga maging DevOps, kailangan mo pagdaanan lahat to regardless kung ops ka or, or, or developers ka. Uh, step down is to learn monitoring software in infrastructure. Okay, so dito, magkakaroon ka na ng idea. Dapat, since meron ka ng idea about uh, infrastructure and then developers, dapat matututunan mo na rin or dapat magkaroon ka na rin ng idea about software infrastructure or monitoring. Yun na yung sa third phrase, remember, na hindi lang natatapos sa pag-deploy. Dapat binabantayan mo rin yung performance ng application mo. Para din sa improvement, or improvement of experience of your end users. So, doon ka na sa stage na yun. Lastly, learn about cloud providers. So, cloud provider or clouds, cloud computing as well is a, is a DevOps concept. Okay? So, yun na yung no need for physical servers. Lahat is nasa cloud na. So, kapag natutunan mo na itong first uh, steps, sisil na lang sa'yo or, or, or basic na lang sa'yo matutunan ng cloud. Uh, concepts. It can be AWS, it can be IBM Cloud, it can be Alibaba Cloud, um, a lot of things. Uh, private Cloud, Public Cloud, dun, yun, yun. Uh, kailangan yung matutunan yun. So yun daw, those are the steps 
uh, to become a DevOps. Medyo chunky siya, di ba? Pero kung mapapansin nyo, hindi yun namamalayan. Or, or uh, some, subconsciously or unconsciously nyo na, um, nalalaman na, hey, na, na, natatouch ko na pala yung um, different aspects ng isang computer engineers or isang IT. Like merong part dito ng programming. Merong part dito ng ad system administration. Meron dito ng network. Okay? And then this, this, ito na yung mga application ng mga basic understanding. So imagine, you are one whole package. So kahit saan ka itapon, maging isa ang network engineer sa isang company. Pero the fact na meron kang DevOps culture or meron kang DevOps idea, hindi lang yun ang kaya mong gawin. Hindi lang network ang kaya mong gawin. Pwede ka rin ma-expose sa software development or maging isang operations. So imagine, isa lang yun sa mga benefits nyo um, as a DevOps. Alright, so let's move on to the next slide. Next is, what are the benefits? Benefits daw ng isang DevOps. So there is uh, a 2015 State of DevOps report that was published by Puppet Lab. Though, mapapansin nyo it's a 2015 report, but um, kung titignan nyo yung history ng DevOps, 2015 is the start or the um, the start or, or, or yung um, pagiging sikat ng DevOps culture na is slowly being embraced by the community or by the, the whole industry. So, nagkaroon daw sila ng uh, report. Sinurvey nila yung mga companies na um, nag start mag-embrace ng DevOps. And nakita dito tong mga bagay na to. Like, deploy codes 30 times faster and with 200 times shorter lead time as compared to their lower performing peers. So, imaginein mo kung um, DevOps ka or yung company nyo is nag uh, per perform ng DevOps culture. So, kung traditionally naabot ng sham sham, so kapag may DevOps ka na equip yung mga developers mo and operation mo with DevOps culture and you are using DevOps tools, then definitely you should expect a 30 times or more faster deployment rate. So, it means na kung, kung, kung may website ka, kung before, kung may website ka, tas traditional yung um, approach nyo, May pap, di ba before mapapansin nyo na magda-downtime muna or maintenance mode yung website. So kung e-commerce siya, tas nakas-downtime ng let's say 3 days or isang araw man lang, or let's say isang araw, nagde-deploy ang mga developers nyo na updates, gusto nyo lang lagyan ng Christmas banner, pero kailangan nyo i-down yung website, aabuti ng isang araw. So asin na yung one-day hour pro, uh, one day profit? Walang benta kasi nga down yung e-commerce site ko. But with DevOps, hindi mo na kailangan mag-down ng websites. It can be done on real time. Mapapansin nyo si Facebook. Example si Facebook. Never siyang nagkaroon ng downtime or nagkaroon ng uh, maintenance mode. Hindi nila denounce si DevOps para mag-push ng updates. Kusa na lang siyang nababago yung layout. Kusa na lang nagbabago yung uh, nagkakaroon ng additional features na hindi niya na, hindi niya na mamalayan. Or the next time you open your Facebook app, may bago na palang feature si Facebook. Kasi naka-DevOps na sila. Okay? Ganun katinde ang DevOps. Ganun ka, kaganda, ka, ka, um, ka beneficial ang DevOps sa isang company. Kasi it, you will not lose your profit. Instead, it will gain more. You're gonna gain more by just deploying your updates more faster. Next daw, you're gonna have 60 times fewer failures or kung nagkaroon man ng failure, merong mas mabilis na recovery um, rate of it. So, example, kung nagkaroon ng um, issue ang website nyo, kung nag-down ang website nyo or nag nagkaroon ng slowness, di ba kung, kung, kung pupunta ka sa Lazada, tas mafe-feel mo, ang bagal-bagal ng Lazada, ang tagal mag-next page. So, minsan, hindi mo na itutuloy, hindi mo na itutuloy yung um, pamimili mo. If if the pro if the problem is not your uh, internet provider, ah, kung ang talagang problema is yung website talaga sobrang bagal, hindi mo na itutuloy. So another, you know, another point of losing profit. And kung identify yun ng mga IT nyo na mabagal na si website, tapos if fix nyo ng, if fix nila ng inaabuti ng sham-sham, itadawan pa yung website para lang i-fix. So, you're gonna lose a profit. But with DevOps, 
sa pamamagitan ng mga DevOps tools, sa pamamagitan ng monitoring of application and websites, doon pa lang, uh, mabilis na mag-jump in, mabilis na manonotify yung mga, um, yung mga operations mo para ma-fix yung issue. And uh, the good thing about DevOps is may mga nag emerge ng mga app, uh, DevOps tools na by just monitoring the application and may na-detect silang issue, may na-detect na issue yung application or yung DevOps sa application mo, yung DevOps tools na rin mismo ang mag-fix nun. How good? So, paano, sobrang ganda nun, di ba? Tapos, ino-notify na lang yung operations na, hey, operations, uh, may na-detect akong slowness ng, uh, ng website. Pero since DevOps tools ako, finix ko na rin siya, kahit tulog ka. Ako nang nag-fix na ito. So, ganun. It's an AI also. Ganun ka benefits yung mga DevOps tools and by just, you know, embracing DevOps. And also, DevOps practices improve IT performances. So, sa pamamagitan lang ng deploy faster, um, fewer failures, faster recovery, definitely you are improving your IT performance. And pag, uh, pag improve your IT performance mo, of course, you have a strong IT and a very competitive or has high competitive advantage compared to other organizations that are just doing traditional. Sounds good? Okay, let's go to the next slide. So on the next slide, you're gonna see a lot, or I, I listed a lot, um, or just few of those DevOps tools available in the market. Most of them are open source, and some are paid version. So ako, uh, as the one practicing DevOps for years already, hindi ko pato, hindi, hindi lahat dito is na nagamit ko na sa sobrang dami niya. It depends. It depends on um, how it how it will benefit on your company, how it will benefit on your operations sa pagpili nyo ng DevOps tools. Okay? So, kung isa kang executive or isa kang tech lead, kailangan nyo mag-collaborate um, at, you know, ay identify nyo kung ano ba talaga yung mga DevOps tools available in the market na pwede nyo gamitin um, on your DevOps journey. Okay? So, ito, siguro, mga, ito, Jenkins, ginagamit namin to, Chef, uh, ano pa ba, Bamboo, Slack, GitHub, of course, GitHub, um, our code repository. So, ito, some, some lang yung mga nagamit ko. Others are not. So, you can check out. Sobrang dami niya sa net. Okay? Alright, the best part. Next slide, we'll talk about job opportunities. Ano ba yung mga job opportunities kapag venture out nyo yung DevOps? So, very beneficial ito sa mga estudyante kung kung sa simula pa lang um dev, devops na yung um pinu nyo following the devops road, roadmap so you can be a devops architect daw so kung since may idea ka ng mga devops tools you know how how devops works you have a way or you have a skill now to to architect so kung magkaroon ka ng client na they're doing it they're still doing the traditional dev uh, traditional away and then hinar ka nila hey kailangan ko ng architect para mag uh, tutulong sa akin mag transform ng traditional IT ko so having equipped with devops tools and devops knowledge pwede ka nang tawagin devops architect of course it takes a lot of um, years of experience and uh, skills to become uh, an architect but yeah you can still be a, you can be called a devops architect cloud engineer ito ako ngayon so hindi lang ako hindi lang ako um, situated sa cloud since alam ko rin yung mga DevOps tools uh, and DevOps perspective DevOps practices pero nakalain ako sa cloud so kung merong isang uh, isang client kami sa company ko na let's say kailangan namin solution na yung IT problem nila sa IT IT department nila and um, isa sa mga kontrata namin or project involves part of it is cloud tatawagin nila ako. So, ang company ko is parang i-join in ako sa, sa team na yon for that particular project. And I will be their cloud perspective kung paano mariresolve yung problema or paano i-execute yung, yung project na yon. So, I can be a part of the DevOps um, transformation ng isang team. And a lot more. You can be an automation engineer. Kung DevOps ka, dapat alam mo na yung mga automation tools na mag-automate ng, uh, yun know, 
ng uh, performances and then the operations nyo. So for tester, so security engineer, since again, you'll be exposed or you, you should know about networks and security, then you can be a secure security engineer. Release manager, release manager, yun yung tumutulong sa developers and operations para maging smooth yung pag-deploy uh, ng updates. Integration specialist, ito yung hand-in-hand -hand with DevOps architect para mag-come up sila, so integrate nila. So, hindi, lang, hindi ka lang um, uh, limited sa isang uh, DevOps tools. Pwedeng three or more DevOps tools ang gamitin mo and then i-combine mo siya or i-integrate mo siya para mag, uh, maging smooth yung operations nila. I-integrate mo yung bawat DevOps tools na tutulong sa'yo. So, you can be an integration specialist. And many, many, many more. Check nyo lang siya sa website, uh, sa internet, kung ano pa yung mga kayang gawin or mga opportunities na isang DevOps. Alright? So, testaments. I have screenshot some of the testaments of those IT companies or mga CEOs na nag-adopt uh, nag ng DevOps. So, let's check some of them, what they say. First, Sinabi na, na DevOps professionals are in high demand and the accompanying sales or salaries prove it. So tingnan nyo, hindi sila tinatawag na DevOps engineers kasi nga um, it's not a position to fill in. Instead, a DevOps professionals can be a DevOps executive, can be a DevOps lead. So no matter what your role is, kapag isa ang DevOps professionals, you are high demand. Kasi right now, we are in a digital transformation and some companies are still trying to uh, transform their IT organization to DevOps. So definitely, uh, mag sila ng mga DevOps or my idea or has a background of DevOps. And kapag high demand, of course, it's associated with malaking sweldo. Data shows that companies are investing in people who have the skill sets that can make IT a strong and competitive advantage. So willing daw sila mag-invest, kaya malaki ang salary. Willing sila mag-invest, maka-hire ng very, uh, the best DevOps sa kanilang company para i-transform nila yung IT organization nila into a strong competitive one. Okay. Next is, it says here that because software is the driver of modern business, so lahat is meron ng website, lahat is nagkakaroon na sa mga uh, mobile app, Okay, para ma-push or ma-drive yung kanilang business, organizations are adopting DevOps practices. So kung meron kang software, meron kang mobile app, of course, it, it equates or it associates with developers na kailangan mag-push ng updates. So kung traditional ka pa rin, aabutin nga ng siyam-siyam yung pag-deploy nyo. So might as well invest or adopt DevOps para mas mapabilis yung updates nyo at uh, ayun, no, more, or no more downtime and mas higher profit profitability. So efficiency uh, to a faster de delivery of better quality software. So people with DevOps skills are going to find more opportunities now and jobs with higher salaries today and in the future. Kung mapapansin nyo, since uh, sobrang beneficial na ngayon ang DevOps um, during pandemic kasi lahat ay nag op na to uh, like work from home or um, lahat is gumagamit na ng Zoom. Here, here, Zoom is an example of a cloud technology. Okay? So, papansin nyo, hindi nyo na namamalayan DevOps na pala itong mga ginagamit natin. And this is our future. Tawag nga namin dito, digital transformation. So, tinatransform na yung um, community into digital since um, isa siyang DevOps is part of uh, digital age. Okay? As we go to digital age, hindi mawawala ang DevOps. Hindi, hindi mafa-face out ang DevOps. Lastly, it says here that IT salaries in the United States and Western Europe are increasing at a faster rate than in other regions of the world because of the relatively high adoption and maturity of DevOps practices according to new research. So imagine, kahit the, sa United States, the Western part of the world, um, ina-adopt na rin yung DevOps. How much more dito sa Asia? Sa Asia, ito, pinag-uusapan na natin. Pero sa IT world, I mean, sa, sa United States and Western Europe, uh, pinag-uusapan din, din, din daw nila yung DevOps. So, hindi lang din sa Asia yung um, opportunities mo. You can get hired as well on the other part of the world, anywhere in the world, with a higher salary. 
of course, and higher um, demand. Okay. So yeah, um, next is happy DevOps. So uh, from confusion or from disaster, mawawala na siya. So oh, nagbago sila Christian and Paolo. Pero dito din, no more. Wall of confusion and work hand in hand. And you guys will just um, deploy, just deploy and deploy and deploy and deploy apps. No more wall of confusion. And lastly, you become a super cat riding on a T-Rex. Just joking. So yeah, um, pwede ka maging isang superhero, pwede ka maging super cat, DevOps. So that's the end of our introduction for DevOps. It is now time for Q&A. You have questions, go ahead, throw it in. Um, so organizer, paano ba to? Paano ba natin ni... Um, uh, hello, yes, yes, yes. Uh, if they have question, so they can uh, use the chat box. Then you can address them, the, the, rather the question, one by one. Yeah, go ahead, guys. Dito yung chat box. Basta related sa basic DevOps. Mm. Magkano raw ang sweldo, sir? Magkano ang sweldo? Um, <laughs> Yan ang unang tanong eh. So, because we, before we engage to the profession, <clears throat> so kailangan eh, encourage mo muna kami. So, one way to encourage us is, ano bang pinag-uusapan natin dito? Di ba? So, is it beneficial ba sa amin? So, instead na mag-DevOps ako, edi mag-Cisco na lang ako. Something like that. So, is it uh, beneficial? Ah, di ba? Um, honestly, sir, I don't want to give figures kasi malalaman yung sweldo ko. Pero, no, 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 no. no. Pero, just, just the industry rate, meaning to say that uh, based on your uh, idea from your seniors and your uh, new colleagues, uh -huh. kung, kung around sa, what figure? Uh, around what kung figure sa, lang? Alimbaba, mm -hmm. Kung sa Philippines, sir, kung sa Philippines, um, kung sa Philippines, six digits. Six digits siya. Oh. Hindi siya bababa ng six digits. Lalo na kung mas maganda ang experience mo o mas mataas ang experience mo, the higher six digits you're gonna get. Paano pa na lang sa abroad? Oh, so, so, sir, sinasabi mo dito ay seven digit ka. <laughs> <laughs> Pwede. Depende, depende siya sa, uh, diba? sa experience. Depende okay, siya sa diba? experience. Basta sa, uh, diba? sa Philippines pa lang, um, six digits na siya. And willing, like I've said, willing yung mga companies to invest on DevOps. Yes, yes. As as far as I know, very limited pa lang din yung mga expert sa DevOps. So meaning to say, it is an opportunity for them to 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 be one of the uh, uh, expert sa area na to. Kasi ko konti pa lang. So di ba? And then DevOps is gradually changing at the faster rate. So kung dati alam mo lang ACICD ngayon, marami na di ba? Marami na ring tools. Okay. Tama, tama sir. I agree. And um. So it's a great opportunity sa mga estudyante, sa mga nagsisimula pa lang ng career. But for those who are already professionals and prof uh, practicing their own uh, their own uh, role on their um, on their company, let's say network ka. Since part din siya ng DevOps, all you need to do is to just get exposed to the other um, you know, concept of DevOps, which is yun nga, infrastructure and then CICD and then um, developers. So by doing that, since network ka na, and then i-expose mo lang yung sarili mo sa other parts of DevOps, kapag meron ka na rin nun, then you are a DevOps itself. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then pwede ka na rin ibato. Kung ibato ka sa ibang company and kailangan nila ng software, pero network yung background mo, but since DevOps ka, pwede mo pa rin uh, i-apply yung uh, software skills mo. Okay. As a DevOps. Okay. So that's great. That's great. That's great. There is a question here from the chat box. Uh, may tanong. So, ano raw itong uh, first exam code needed for DevOps for beginners? So, saan daw sila pwedeng kumuha ng learning materials? Okay. 
So, um, good question. Like I've said, um, DevOps is, is really broad. Okay. And then, let's say, for example, sa cloud. Um, cloud, which is a DevOps um, concept. So, in cloud, may mga provider, different provider. Example, si AWS, si IBM, si Red Hat. So, bawat, uh, bawat providers, may kanya-kanya silang mga exams or certifications na in-offer for their um, for their own product. So for example si si AWS, kung gusto mong mag-specify sa cloud engineer and then uh, pinili mong AWS, may mga exam si uh, si AWS na pwede mong i-take to to become a cloud or DevOps. So there is there's is no specific uh, certification to become a DevOps. Kung kung gusto mong i-take lahat ng available um, exams, may it be for a particular automation tool, let's say uh, Ansible or Jenkins. So meron ding sariling examination si Jenkins para uh, magamit mo siya or para maging isa kang certified DevOps. There is no, again, there is no specific uh, examination for DevOps. You just have to choose what kind of DevOps tools or what kind of DevOps um, profession you want to specify and you can take those. You can check the net. Available siya sa net kung itatype mo lang um, AWS exam. So, bibigyan ka, ng, bibigyan ka ni AWS website ng mga exams mo. And it has a code. And learning materials, depende pa rin yun sa tools na gagamitin, na, na pinili mo. Like kung Jenkins, uh, Jenkins yung pinili mong DevOps tools. So, check mo dun kung ano yung materials na kailangan mo. Of course, kailangan mo munang um, gamitin yung DevOps tools na yun. Isa yun sa learning material na kailangan mo gamitin. And so many more, sir. Okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Another thing, meron ako before nakita sa website, parang ang pangalan niya is uh, DevOps Institute. I think they are providing some certification, but I'm not sure what specific technology are they pushing dun sa mga nag-aaral dun sa kanila. So, most likely, more on ano sila concept, but pertaining sa technology, wala akong natinig. But they can check it on the internet. Yes. Then, uh, yes. Another thing is that, ano yung mga skill set na dapat na meron ako para pwede akong mag-qualify, mag-practice, or mag-dive in sa DevOps? Skill set, just follow the roadmap. Just follow the roadmap. Mm. Tulad na sinabi ko, you can just uh, learn a particular programming language. Um, you, you're not limited to one programming language. Kung gusto mo more than one, go ahead. Okay, the more programming language to her you are, the more competitive uh, you are as a DevOps. And so, are so many other things. Just follow the roadmap and you'll become a DevOps in no time. Yun yung skill set okay. na kailangan mo. Mm, okay. Then, other question here. Oh, yes. So, Correct. I have... So, I, mm -hmm. Take it, sir. Carry on. Yeah, so, uh, just two more questions, I guess, para... Um, kapag proceed tayo. So, I have here another question. If I pursue DevOps, should I take both software and hardware in computer engineering? Actually, um, by the fact na nag-aaral ka na ng computer engineering, you should get exposed already on software and hardware. The basic of the basic um, requirement lang sa DevOps is you should be at least exposed to those two or have an idea on, on those uh, on those two fields, software and, and hardware. Hardware will will come uh, will, will come in handy kapag gumagamit na kayo ng mga servers. Okay, so you just have to take you really need to take both software engineering to pursue software and then hardware to pursue DevOps. Last question: Some of uh, some or most of us are teachers here. Would you recommend the steps set up or practice? of DevOps to CPE thesis and project development, which tools would you recommend for beginners? Yes, I highly agree. I highly recommend this DevOps um, practices to be incorporated in CPE or IT thesis, or not only in thesis, but also in the curriculum. Because <clears throat> um, we are already on a digital transformation and hindi na siya mawawala sa, um, sa system natin, sa system ng mundo when it comes to uh, digital age. And isa sa mga um, higher concept ng digital transformation is the DevOps itself. So kapag gusto mo maintindihan yung digital transformation, you can start from DevOps. And um, 
definitely kung thesis siya kung gusto niya incorporate sa thesis napakaraming uh, uh, topics regarding devops na pwede niyo gawin thesis um, for masteral or for from um, you know a bachelor's and two siguro mag-start kayo sa cloud since it's uh, it's, it's the most um, accessible like the moment lang na gumagamit kayo ng Dropbox okay it's already a cloud um, cloud tools so hindi niyo lang namamalayan na gumagamit na pala ng cloud again itong Zoom is already a cloud is a cloud technology so you can start from there or just follow the roadmap just follow the roadmap um, about in, in regards to devops for beginners okay so thank you thank you so much sa lahat ng questions um, again, this is just the basic concept of DevOps and if you really want to pursue or you really want to, you know, explore or expand your knowledge about DevOps, you can search the net, there's a lot. But the moment, since meron na kayong, equip na kayo about the, the basic of DevOps, it's principle, then hindi na kayo malilito, hindi na dapat kayo, um, you know, makukonfuse kapag naka-encounter kayo, kayo ng mga advanced um, concept about DevOps. Hindi rin, um, <clears throat> kung mapapansin nyo sa webinar natin is hindi rin ako masyadong nag-talk about technical, technicalities kasi aabutin tayo ng magdamag or ilang araw yun dapat pag-usapan. Who knows, maybe organizers can organize uh, part two of this DevOps but the moment na meron tayong basic is already, you know, a big, a big benefit uh, for you guys, students and professionals. So it's used by around 80% of Fortune 500 companies. So, ano ba yung mga Fortune 500s? Those are those are um, enlisted companies, okay? The top 500 na sa buong mundo. And sinabi niya na 80% daw ng Fortune companies noon ay gumagamit na AWS. Isa rin siya sa, you know, um, popularity because of popularity of AWS. So, AWS also is an infrastructure as a service, okay? Pag sinabing infrastructure as a service, Si AWS yung nagpo-provide ng mga data center at uh, tayo na lang mga customer ang nag-avail ng services like, hey, customer, meron akong um, mga servers dito na pwedeng ipahiram sa'yo, ipagamit sa'yo. So that's a form of infrastructure as a service. Uh, how na yung mag-maintain ng mga servers, I'll make sure na 100% working, I'll make sure na 24-7 up yung mga servers. Ano mo na lang, irarentahan mo na lang. So ganun daw si AWS. AWS can also be a platform as a service. Okay? Yun yung, um, yun yung pwede ka na mag-onboard ng mga services like kung gusto mo mag-Apache or, or, or mag-WordPress. Pwede ng uh, si AWS na yung magpo-provide ng VPC mo, ng uh, mga subnet mo, or ng uh, database mo. So it, it works as a platform as a service. And lastly, software as a service. May mga services din si AWS na um, application na siya. Gagamitin mo na lang. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-install ng Apache. Hindi mo na kailangan mag-renta ng server. Gagamitin mo na lang siya. Example nyo yung mga robotics. So kung ano ka, kung um, hardware guy ka or robots ka, robotics ka at gusto mong gumamit ng cloud, hindi, hindi mo na kailangan mag-renta you know, mag, mag ng server kay AWS, mag-install ng kung ano-ano, um, Raspberry Pi, console, mga ganun. Nag-offer na sa AWS no, naka-pre-installed naka na siya, gagamitin mo na lang. Um, another form of uh, software as a service is Dropbox. So, kunyari, Dropbox or um, Google Drive. So, ano na siya, um, storage platform siya, gagamitin mo na lang. Hindi mo alam kung ano yung um, yung server na ginagamit nila, hindi mo alam kung ilan na lang yung natitirang space sa server or sa hardware. Ang alam mo lang, ang naka-expose lang sa'yo as a user is that merong software na tinatawag na Dropbox, gagamitin mo na lang. So, pwede din daw sa AWS nun. So, imagine, ano na siya, um, total package na siya. Kaya, sobrang sikat. Kaya ginagamit na rin siya ng, um, you know, top companies. Also, it's a cloud storage platform. So, talaga sinabi ko, um, pwede siyang mag-work as, as, as a Dropbox. Like uh, S3. Ang tawag, nila, ang tawag ni AWS doon S3. Eh, may nagsusulat. 
Yeah, oh, yan. So, tulad ni Dropbox and AWS, pwede ka rin mag-store ng image, ng um, videos, um, ng MP3, MP4 sa AWS. Next, bakit daw siya sobrang sikat? Why is it such a hit? Let's see. Okay, so ang paggamit daw kay AWS or pag-subscribe kay AWS are per hour billing. So, hindi na siya yung, kunyari, um, tulad sa telco na um, per month, ito yung, ano mo, ito yung bill mo, bibigyan ka ito ng 100 minutes, mga ganun. Hindi. Ang AWS ay per hour billing, kumbaga pay as you go, kung ano lang yung ginamit mo, yun lang ang babayaran mo for that particular hour. Example, um, nag-spin up ka ng server or ng instance sa uh, AWS, like kailangan mo na isang Windows box or Windows instance, Windows server. Then, na-install na mo siya, nagraran na siya sa cloud, and then ERDP mo. For, for your own purposes, kung may gusto kang um, paggamitan nun. So, ibibuild ka ng AWS per hour. Kung ano lang, kung, kung ilang oras mo lang ginamit. Then, pag pinatay mo siya, pag shutdown mo yung instance mo or yung server mo sa cloud, hindi ka niya i-rate. Hindi, hindi yung bibilangin. Naka-stay naka, naka lang siya doon. Same goes kapag totally terminate mo yung yung Windows Server tala, tapos mo nang gamitin, hindi ka na rin um, i-rate nun, hindi ka na rin bibil nun. Bibil ka lang the moment na um, suminde yung Windows Server mo. Alright? Easy sign up process, napakadaling mag-sign up sa, uh, sa AWS. Even as, uh, as simple as an individual guy like me can sign up, as big as companies pwede mag-sign up. Um, individuals can use AWS for their testing purposes or mag play around and um, AWS can also be used for production. Um, example, si, si, si Cebu Pac, Cebu Pacific. Yung website nila is naka AWS. Si Traveloka, naka AWS din siya. Um, and so many other companies, e-commerce, hindi lang specifically IT, pati mga uh, businesses ay gumagamit din ng AWS. Simple billing. Uh, tulad sabi ko, aside from per hour billing siya, is napakadali, napakadali din ang intindihin ang um, uh, AWS. Um, bill, ang bill niya, bill uh, costs, as well as how to pay it. Pwede na rin siyang via card. Hindi mo na kailangan pumunta sa mga bayad centers. Um, I-input mo lang yung card mo. Then, uh, you're good to go. Later, papakita ko sa inyo yung example ng um, AWS console ko at yung mga features niya. Tsaka example na rin, simple, sample billing. Uh, kung paano ka binibuild ni AWS. So next, stability. Siyempre, hindi naman siya magiging sikat sa Fortune 500 kung di stable. And subok na rin siya. It's been running for years already and wala pa siyang history na sobrang um, sobrang nagdown. Sobrang reliable siya. Okay? And wala pang history nga na nagdown siya or nagkaroon ng major impact. Kasi nga, um, sobrang uh, stable. Stable ang AWS. Trusted vendor. Uh, kung ano yung ino-offer nila, yun talaga yung uh, binibigay nilang service. Kung platform as a service, kung infrastructure as a service, kung let's say pumili ka ng T2 micro at uh, ilang, ilang, one gigabyte, one gigabyte lang yun, Kapag binuksan mo na yung server mo, makikita mo nga na 1 gigabyte lang yun. Ang 1 gigabyte talaga yung binigay sa'yo, hindi yung uh, lower than that. Okay? Alright, so ito yung mga reason kung bakit hit siya. Next. Service overview. So ano ba yung mga servisyo na ino-offer na AWS? Ang pinakasikat is ang EC2 or Elastic Compute Cloud. Ito yung version nila ng mga servers or they call it instance. So, dito po makikita yung mga niraran mo kung, kung, kung kukuha ka ng um, dalawang server, sasabihin mo lang kung anong gano'ng kalaki yun, anong size. So, dito mo siya makikita sa service overview or sa service uh, portion ng AWS. VPC. So, ito naman yung way ni, um, uh, ni Amazon, ni AWS, para isegregate niya yung mga environment ng mga customer niya. So, example, ako, um, nag-subscribe ako kay AWS. 
of course, para magamit ko yung cloud niya, kailangan akong bigyan ni AWS ng private ano ko, private environment. We, they call it virtual private cloud. So, meron kang nakasegregate ka, nakaseparate ka, binigyan ka ng chunk ng cloud ni, ni AWS para magamit mo, para mag-spin up ka ng server, para mag, um, maglagay ka ng IT addresses. At hindi mo hindi ka magkakaroon ng chance mag-overlap sa VPC ng ibang company or sa ibang tao. At hindi rin sila makakapag-overlap o mag interfere sa sarili mong private cloud. Okay, that's, again, that's how AWS segregates the environments of their consumers or, or um, customers. Next, S3, Simple Storage Service. Ito yung parang Dropbox ni AWS. So, pwede ka nang, again, pwede ka mag-save ng uh, images, ng videos, ng, ng audio, kahit anong object. Uh, pwede mo siyang i-save. Uh, pwede mo rin siyang incorporate sa VPC and EC2. Pwede mo siyang i-connect. Like yung EC2 mo is kailangan ng, um, kailangan may images. Kunyari, um, nagra-run ka ng, um, kunyari si Traveloka or, or si Cebu Pacific. Um, kailangan niya ng S3, kailangan niya ng storage para store yung mga itinerary ng mga customer. Para ma-view ng customer at later time. So, ma-view ng customer, madadownload ni customer yung itinerary via PDF. So, saan ba naka-save yun? Saan ba naka-store yun? Sa S3. At since um, connected siya sa EC2, so sa website ni uh, Cebu Pacific, pag kinlik ni customer yung download, madadownload siya. So, saan ba galing yun? Sa S3. And so many other applications na pwede mong paggamitan sa S3. At hindi siya database, ha? hindi siya yung mga SQL na nagsisave ng data. S3 stores um, objects. Yun nga, image. Um, audio PDF. Oh, ito. Ito. Um, relational database. So, nag-offer din si cost si, si uh, AWS ng relational uh, database service. It's a separate. So, kung sa traditional traditional um, setup ng data center para magkaroon ka ng EC2, uh, para magkaroon ka ng database, kailangan mo muna magkaroon ng server. Kung Linux ka, tapos MySQL, mag-install ka pa ng MySQL. Okay. But, Dito sa AWS, hindi mo na kailangan mag-create uh, mag ng server para sa database mo. Meron na siyang sariling service. Sasabihin mo lang kung anong klaseng uh, database ang gusto mo, let's say MySQL, i-connect mo na lang din sa server mo na nagra-run sa EC2. So it's a form of platform as a service. Okay? Hindi, na, hindi mo na kailangan mag-install kasi si AWS na yung bahala doon. And yung underlying infrastructure kung paano nagra-run yung MySQL na na um, sinaservice sa'yo ni AWS, hindi mo na rin kailangan i-manage yung server na yun kasi si AWS na bahala doon. Kung baga, ang front-facing na lang sa'yo is, hey, customer, meron akong database service para sa'yo. Anong gusto mo? Um, click mo lang. Then, bibigyan na kita. Something like that. So, yun. Next is Route 53. This is a form of um, DNS management. Kung baga, kung may website ka, yung website mo nag-host sa EC2 or sa server, then hindi mo na kailangan pumunta sa GoDaddy or sa mga ibang um, DNS provider. Kahit, kahit dungan na lang sa, uh, sa bakuran ng AWS, meron siyang Route 53 para ma-mask mo yung uh, website mo kung ano gusto mong um, you know, DNS or, or, or endpoint or URL pwede mong gamitin yung Route 53 service. Next is ELB or load balancing. So, kung nakarinig na kayo ng mga F5, um, yung mga ganun, so, hindi mo na kailangan mag-shift ship ng physical load balancer. Meron na rin service ng si Cloud, si AWS. So, all you need to do is, you know, uh, enable the load balancing. So, for those who don't, don't know what load balancing is, siya yung na, the load balance. Bale, kung may pumasok dito na, na incoming uh, traffic, pag sinet mo yung load balancer mo na sa this particular servers lang dapat madidistribute ang load. So, yun ang trabaho ni load balancer. I-distribute niya para hindi, kunyari, um, ma-overload tong isang server na to. Kung wala siyang load balancer, dito lang lahat pumupunta yung traffic. Ma-overload to. Paano iba? So, sa pamamagitan ni load balancer, siya yung mag-distribute para evenly yung distribution ng load. Um, okay, pwede pong pang-mute. 
um, para hindi ma-interfere. Kindly check if you are on mute. Please. Thank you. So, ayun. Um, load balancing. Next is auto scaling. So, ito, napakagad na rin siyang service ni AWS. So, um, give you idea. Auto scaling, kapag nilagay mo, nilagay mo sa auto scaling yung mga servers mo, so the moment na magkaroon ng surgeons, example, um, uh, meron kang e-commerce na nagaran sa mga ser EC2, sa mga servers na nagaran sa cloud, sa AWS. So, meron akong dalawa. Kapag nilagay mo siya sa auto scaling, eh, tinuturo tinuturuan mo ngayon si AWS na in-instruct mo sa AWS na Hey, AWS, mag na ako ng sale. And kapag nag-sale yung website ko, definitely maraming akong hit or marami akong uh, visitors. Pag marami akong visitors, papalo ang CPU ko, papalo ang resources ko. At baka mag-down mag ang website ko at baka mag-slow ang website ko. So you need, uh, you need to provide me an auto-scaling. So kapag in-auto-scale ni AWS yun, magpo-provide siya ng many more copy ng EC2. And sa pamamagitan ni load balancer, malo-load balance na yun. So in that way, mapaprevent mo yung, um, you know, yung um, overloading ng mga servers. And it's all gonna be done automatically. Hindi mo na kailangan ng manual. So it is scaling out as needed. Kapag naman tapos na yung sale, kapag tinuruan mo si auto scaling na tapos na yung sale at napansin na niya na bumababa na yung hit or bumababa na yung resources, uh, usages, then automatically din niyang tatanggalin na yung mga na-scale out niya at babalik na sa minimum size or desired capacity. Yung desired capacity, yung talaga yung uh, number of servers na um, gusto ko on a normal um, operation. Okay? So ito yung desired capacity. Minimum kapag bumaba siya, isa lang ang kailangan ko minimum. Pero ang desired ko is dalawa. So kapag ang maximum naman, sinabi ko maximum, may auto-scaling, maximum of ano lang ha, apat lang ha, so, hindi na siya mag-scale out ng mas marami pa. Mas marami pa, like more than five, ganyan. Kasi sinet mo na ng maximum lang kapag nagkaroon ako ng sale, ang maximum lang na server ko dapat is apat. Tapos kapag tapos na, tapos na sale, uh, tatanggalin mo na yung mga na-scale out, mababalik ka sa desired capacity. See how intelligent AWS is. It's a form of AI and um, everything can be done automatically. So, it's an application of DevOps also na nagraran sa cloud. Okay? How much it cost? Magkano ba siya? So again, um, per hour billing, almost all ng services ni AWS. So many, napakaraming rate nun. Kung kunyari, T2 micro, as small as T2 micro, of course, kapag nagraran siya ng per ora, mali, mura lang yan. Mura lang siya. Compared sa mas malalaking uh, resources na, na server na bibili mo or, or i-avail mo. Of course, mas mahal, mas mahal naman yung per ora niya. And so many others. You can check on the, on the internet kung, kung magkano yun. Kasi abutin tayo ng siyam-siyam kapag inisa-isa natin. So yun. And region-specific pricing din siya. Kung, um, depende rin siya sa parte ng mundo kung gaano ka mahal or kung, kung magkano yung mga servers na i-avail mo kay AWS. I think dito sa Asia, ma mas mahal sa Tokyo and Singapore. So may mga regions si AWS na um, mas mura. So mamaya alamin natin kung ano yung mga region uh, meron sa AWS. And meron din mga region sa, of course, sa US. Iba-iba ng rate. Iba-iba ng rate per region. May mas mura, may mas mahal. Uh, so isa yun sa mga factor, deciding factor kung saan mo i-spin up yung mga servers mo. Yes, meron kang capability na mag-spin up. Kahit nasa Pilipinas ka, meron kang capability mag-spin up ang server sa um, sa US or dito sa Singapore. We're gonna know why and how later. Terms, term specific pricing. Meron ding options sa AWS like um, may tinatawag silang reserved servers or reserved instances. Yun yung sasabihin mo kay AWS na, hey AWS, um, reserve mo ako ng tatlong server sa isang taon, sa isang buong, sa, sa isang buong taon or 12 months. So that's term specific pricing. Parang kinokontrata mo na si si AWS na mag-reserve ng ng server para sa for your own purposes for for whatever purposes you like and um pe-pressurean niya yon. Um so meron merong pricing na, na ginagawa sa AWS para doon. And I think mas mura siya kung per ora uh, per or, per hour billing. So ganun, may discount na mangyayari kung pero ang ang gist lang noon is 
kailangan one time big time yung bayaran mo isang bagsak ang big bayad mo yung yung term um, term pricing or or reserve ng mga instances so it will gonna be um, price you a lot pero nga uh, kung ko computein mo per aura versus uh, reserved is magkakaroon ka ng discount Next is spot resources. Ito napaka-cool na, uh, na feature to or option to para ka AWS. Pag spot resources, yung pinatawag na nila na bidding. Nagbibid ka. So, sa isang data, sa isang um, region, isang data center na AWS, may uh, may mga chances na hindi na hindi nagagamit yung mostly ng mga um, ng mga server niya. So, gagawin ni, parang kumbaga sa isang data center, 80% lang yung nagagamit ng mga customer. So, maasan yung 30%. So, para magamit ni, para mapakinabangan pa rin na AWS yung mga resources na yon ibibid niya yon ibibenta niya yon sa mga customer. Sabi niya sa customer, eh, hey, meron ako ditong three, 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 service, uh, three servers na hindi nagagamit. So, ibibid ko, magbid kayo, kung sino pinakamataas or higher bidder, siya yung makakakuha ng mga server na to. So, magbibid ka, magbibid ka. Kung nabid ko naman, let's say, um, Okay, 30, 30 cents per hour. Akin na yung mga server. So, kung ikaw yung highest bidder, sa'yo yung uh, server na yun. Pwede mo siya magkamitin for whatever purposes you like. Ang problema lang doon, the moment na may mag-outbid sa'yo or may nag-bid uh, sa'yo na mas higher sa una mong in-offer, makukuha yung server sa'yo. Aagawin ng, uh, ng AWS sa'yo at ibibigay sa uh, highest bidder. So, ma-wipe out yung mga laman ng server na yun at uh, clean ang mapupunta sa bagong bidder. So purpose lang ng ano na yon ng ng server na yon is for mga ad hoc ad hoc uh, tasks mo at hindi siya um, preferably para sa production. Okay. So next is okay, let's now how big is it? So right now we have 16 regions. Currently 16 regions scattered all over the world. Um walang uh, pag sinabing region yun yung pagkaka um, pagkaka segregate or distribute ng services na AWS across the world. So yun nga, um, kahit nasa Pilipinas ka, pwede kang mag-spin up. Kung feel mo na, uy, mas mura sa AWS US, so doon ako mag-run. So you need, but you need to consider as well the latency. Um, kung ang mga customer mo naman ay mga nasa US din, kung ang mga ang mga customer mo na nag-access ng website mo as a, ay, ay, ay nasa US, then it's more uh, advantage na doon ka mag-spin up sa US ng server mo. So, you're gonna address the latency. Hindi masyado mabagal. Kasi kung sa Singapore ka na mag-spin up ng service mo, pero sa US yung customer mo, um, masyadong mabagal yun. Magkakaroon ng latency. Pero meron ding solution sa AWS para doon. But then, kung mas mabilis, kung, kung, ina, kung iniisip mo yung geographical location, doon ka kung saan, doon may spin up yung resources mo kung saan uh, mas marami kang customer. Okay? Then, uh, global footprint. So, again, um, it is traceable all over the world. Kahit saan ka magpunta, mayroong trace ng AWS. You may not notice it. Yung website na, or Lazada, or kahit anong website na in-access mo, or, 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 or mga online tools na ginagamit mo, Facebook, ganyan. Um, you might know, AWS yun. Uh, it's a global footprint. And multiple availability zones per region. Ang ibig sabi na availability zones uh, in layman's terms, these are data centers na AWS. So it doesn't mean na kung cloud siya, nasa cloud siya, lumulutang, hindi. Uh, in reality, they are still physical servers na nakascattered all over the world in a form of a data center. Maaring si Amazon is, uh, is AWS is nagre-renta ng isang buong building sa Singapore na nagre lahat yun puro mga, data, mga, mga servers. So ayun, sa so, in front facing sa customer it is considered cloud pero in reality how it how cloud is being run is still data centers. Okay? At uh, it's it's uh, uh, what do you call this? It is confidential. Hindi hindi lahat nakakaalam kung nasaan yung data centers na yon. Kahit ako hindi ko alam dito sa Singapore kung nasaan yung building na yun. kasi it's a form of sabotage din. Kunyari, may mag-sabotage may bombahin yung building na yun. Di, may madi-disrupt yung service ni Amazon at the same time yung mga customer niya. So, to prevent that, sobrang confidential kung nasaan nakalocate yung mga server ni Amazon, data center ni Amazon. Same goes to other cloud providers. Glad si, si Azure, naka-data center din yan. At hindi rin namin alam kung saan, saan siya naka-associate or naka-incorporate yung uh, data centers niya. Okay? <laughs> And massive data centers as well, sobrang big, as big as buildings. 
building sa hindi lang isang building, maaraming building. And I think the more that they grow, the more that they need to add uh, data centers and they need to add servers. So, bahala na si, ano yun, si Amazon na yun. Business na yun, eh, trabaho na yun. Ang sa atin lang is mag-avail ng service niya. Next, future. Ano daw ang magiging future ni Amazon? So, um, currently, there they has, I mean, it has 212 services. Napakarami na ito. Before, no, simula ko mag-Amazon, 60 plus lang yun. 60 plus lang ang Amazon, ang, ang mga service ni Amazon. Pero right now, look at it. It's 212 already. So, yun yung future ni Amazon. And then, they're launching new services in all domains, in all aspects. So, before, walang robotics. Pero ngayon, meron ng robotics. Before, walang IoT. Pero ngayon, may IoT na. Mamaya, papakita ko sa inyo yung mga services na yun. So, continuously si Amazon na mag-adapt um, and, and mag-create um, ng new services na for the future. And again, I'm pretty sure that other cloud providers as well, like Azure, IBM, I, I, nag, nag ano rin, nagde-develop din ng mga new services para sa mga customers nila. Focus on machine learning. So, um, yeah. So, I think Amazon is already um, best when it comes sa uh, AI. So, um, when it comes sa uh, DevOps. So, right now, they are focusing on machine learnings um, para mas marami pa silang customer na makukuha. And other other domains. Like I said, other domains na rin ang pinofocus ni Amazon. Um, to provide service of. Next, focus on SaaS or software as a service. Yung tulad ng sinabi ko, yung ano na lang, yung gagamitin na lang yung serbisyo, hindi na, hindi na, hindi na mag-spin up ng service si customer, hindi na siya magbabantay ng mga IP addresses, maglalagay ng IP addresses, ganyan. So, um, tinatry i-transform ni Amazon yung services nila in a form na um, it's a one go. Gagamitin na lang. So, one example is service serverless um, serverless feature ni Amazon. So, hindi mo na kailangan mag-spin up ng, serv ng server. Um, yun nga. Tulad na sabi ko, gagamitin na lang. So, yun. Yun yung future ni Amazon. Watch. Kindly watch out for those services that will emerge. And reduction of costs. So, gumagawa rin ng paraan si Amazon na yun, mapamura yung servisyo nila. Again, para mas maraming customer and mas maging, um, ano siya, um, price cost. So, end, end na siya, pero bago tayo mag-end, let me show you a copy or what it looks like or what Amazon uh, looks like. So, yun. Nakikita nyo ba? Okay, so ito ang dashboard ni Amazon. You have to link, uh, check out palakin ko. Yun. So, ito yung account ko. Naka-associate ako sa Singapore. But, you can check actually other regions. Ito yung mga regions nyo. Napakarami. 16. So, andito ko ngayon sa Singapore. Meron sa Seoul. Meron sa Mumbai. Meron sa Tokyo. Wala sa Pilipinas. I think, ang best explanation bakit wala sa Pilipinas is kasi, is kasi bagyuhin ng Pilipinas. Parang ang hirap mag-run uh, mag ng data center dun or dyan compared to other uh, region. Pero anyways, yeah, meron din sa Europe. And meron akong access sa mga region na to. Kung gusto kong mag-spin up ng mga server or mag-run ng services sa mga region na to, inaalaw naman ako ni Amazon. Okay? So, nasa easy to ako ngayon. But if you click the services, may kita nyo, sobrang dami. Hold on. Ayan. So, napakarami siyang services na in-offer. Kiklik mo lang kung interesado ka, let's say may, na na may nabasa ka na, uy, lambda. Then, nabasa mo kung ano yung Lambda, how it works. So, inaalaw ka naman ni Amazon na gamitin yun. So, napakarami. It was categorized according to their usage. Like, these are compute. O, ito mo, serverless. Dati wala na ito. Satellite, <clears throat> Athena, IoT, Internet of Things. Like, who ito? Kung nag-IoT ka, pwede mong explore ito. Um, In-offer ni Amazon. Ito yung S3. May backup din. Databases. Uh, migration transfer, mobile. Oh, ito. Kung meron ka mobile app. So, pwede mo explore tong service ni Amazon na makakabuti para sa development mo or sa, 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 sa business mo. Um, what else? Machine learning. Ito, meron na pala siya. Napakarami. Code uh, developer tools. 
robotics. Ito yung sinasabi ko, RoboMaker. So, kung meron kang robots, eh, naka-cloud yung database and all, hindi mo na kailangan mag-spin up ng mga EC2 instances, things like that. Um, just access or just avail this service as uh, uh, software as a service ni Amazon and you're good to go. Explore mo lang yan. Okay? So, yun. Pero kung ito yung mga instances, so, pakita ko lang sa inyo um, mga instances ko. <clears throat> I have OJTs right now and makikita nyo yung mga OJT. Yung mga server ng OJT ko. So, ito si Gab, ito si Maki, ito si Nicole. So, tinuruan ko sila kung paano mag-AWS, uh, mag mag-cloud. And tinuruan ko sila paano mag-spin up ng servers and kung paano mag-deliver um, ng website nila. So, example, itong kay Gab. So, website niya is naka-exposed. So, kahit, na, kahit si, uh, si Gab is nasa Philippines, um, na-access ko yung website niya dito sa Singapore. So, ito yung website niya. Um, Kinas ko sila na mag mag vlog ng OJT journey niya. So, ito. Ito ay um, hosted sa AWS. Isa sa mga servers na nagraran. And same goes with Maki and Nicole's um, WordPress accounts. Yun. Ito yung kay, ito yung kay Nicole. Ito yung kay Maki. Yan. OJT blog. Yan. So, kung proud ako sa kanila kasi mga OJT ko sila. So, yun. Um, ito naman yung papakita ko sa inyo next is yung billing. Kung paano mag-bill si Amazon. <coughs> Sorry, loading. Okay, so ito, huwag nyo na yung screenshot. Bale, sa bills. Ito yung bill ko for May. Ito lang. Ganyan lang. Uh, sabihin niya sa'yo kung ano yung mga chinacharge niya sa'yo. Like ito, per hour billing. Ito yung do a dollar for T2 instance mo. Nagaran na daw siya ng 449 hours. Ito yung charge. GST collected, taxes. Ganyan lang siya. Pwede mo siyang i-download. Pwede mo siyang print. Pwede mo siyang uh, CRV, CSV. So, yun. Um, ganun lang siya kadali sa mag-avail ni Amazon. And uh, as, as an individual like me, I can definitely be able to have like Amazon <clears throat> account. Ang next natin pag-uusapan, last na, is what are those certifications na pwede niyong i-take kung gusto niyong um, i-pursue yung AWS journey niyo. So here, nas available naman siya sa website ni AWS. You can check it out. Just to give you like uh, an overview. So ayan, um, kapag daw interesado ka kay AWS and then nakakahawak ka na ng AWS tools, then um, may, may mga certifications kayong pwede i-take to certify at pwede nyo siyang i-brag sa mga um, um, companies na pinag-a-applyan nyo. Ang pinaka-foundation here is Cloud Practitioner. So, kung nagsisimula ka pa lang, pero medyo confident ka na na marunong ka na mag-AWS, um, just six months of fundamental AWS Cloud, you can take the Cloud pr Practitioner. Pero, naman, kung um, hindi ka naman pa, wala ka naman pang certification, pero nakaka-require ka ng gumamit ng um, company nyo ng AWS, so meron ka ng one-year one experience, at least one year experience. So, pwede kahit hindi ka na mag-cloud practitioner, kahit dumiretso ka na dito sa associate certification as an architect, operations, and developers, you can jump in right away to this one. And I'm sure ma mapapasa nyo to. And then, next is professional. Kung sobrang-sobrang ano ka na, magaling ka na, or two years, at least two years experience, then you can opt to solution architect or DevOps engineer. Oh, ito, may DevOps engineer palang ino-offer si AWS. So, you don't have to like, uh, this siya prerequisite on each other. Hindi siya prerequisite na kapag uh, bago, ka, bago ka kumuha nito, kailangan mag-cloud practitioner ka muna. No. You can, you can get right away, dive in right away to these certifications without any prerequisites. Okay? Or specialty, kung spe gusto mo mag-specialize specifically on uh, 
on certain aspects of AWS, you can choose this one, advanced networking, data analytics, machine learning, Alexa, or security. Pwedeng dumiretso na dito. And it is, you are not limited to one um, certification. You can get as many as all of this. Sobrang lodi ka na kapag napakaraming pag ito nakuha mo na lahat. And of course, it will be associated with um, higher salary and then more, you're gonna be more in demand kapag napakarami ka ng certification. And also, again, since DevOps and cloud is sobrang lawak, hindi ka lang, um, hindi ka lang ano, you know, uh, limited to this one. Si Azure meron din siyang sariling certification. Si IBM may sariling din siyang certification. There are a lot of more. You can check out the internet. Um, okay, so that's pretty much the end of my presentation for AWS. Uh, Q&A. Q&A na tayo. Go ahead. Yes, yes. Any question? So, same. Pwede nyo i-type dun sa chat box. Yeah. Um, throw it in. Any questions about AWS? Ayan. Ayan na. Kung may hindi kayo na intindihan or confusion. Repeat daw, sir, from the top. Oh, my God. Gawa <laughs> 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 tayo ng second session. <laughs> Oh, pwede rin mag-apply as apprentice. Mm -hmm. Ah, oo. oo. Sige. Um, matatapos na yung summer OJT. Siguro I'm, I'm considering um, first semester OJT. So, paunahan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gawin, de, gawin natin, sir, is from the ICPEP itself. So, oh, meron tayong team. Uh, meron tayong team and then uh, i-cluster natin sino ang undergo ng ganitong training para at least ma-sequence natin. Yeah. Um, Sige, pwede kayong makipag-coordinate sa ICPEP, local or dito sa Singapore. Um, and si ICPEP na yung bahala. No, no, sir. Pwede natin yes, gawin yes. siya ng ano. Uh -oh. ng... Actually, I have a memorandum of understanding with other universities about the uh, online internship. We already have some models. So, ang kailangan na lang natin is implement it uh, sooner or later. Eh, kaya lang nagkaroon ng ano ng... COVID, so medyo na atrasado yung mga discussion. But we will push on that, lalo na ngayon. Okay? So, meron ng tanong, how secure daw yung data sa cloud? How secure? It is super, super secure. I mean, syempre, hindi naman mag-offer si AWS ng, uh, ng isang service ng, or data security. I mean, data kung wala naman security. You can check on the internet. Uh, abutin tayo ng siyam-siyam kapag in-explain ko yun isa-isa. Basta secure siya. Uh, may mga services din si Amazon um, that will secure your uh, your data in cloud. Yes, yes, yes. That is correct. Actually, there is a two section of security sa AWS. Hmm. One is the infrastructure. Si AWS ang bahala sa infrastructure. But the other way, the other section is for the application, yung user. Kasi meron kayong mga users administrator. Meron kayong uh, root user account. So yung root user account is the responsibility ng user to secure it. Pagka nalabas yun, compromise na yung buo mong system. So therefore, it is two-way two uh, to secure the data. So AWS secure yung infrastructure. All the data within the infrastructure is safe. Pero ang problema, yung gumagamit mismo ng cloud, eh, hindi secure sila dun sa kanilang application, then that's the problem. Okay? So again, it is safe. But yung user, kailangan alam niya kung paano i-protect yung sarili niyang corporate data. Okay? Correct. Next. May layering, uh, may layering yes. uh, security layering din sa AWS. Like sa network layering, yung mga firewalls, yung mga ports na opens. Those things. So many so many ideas about uh, security and uh, available lahat yun kay Amazon. Yes. Okay. Next question, sir. How much is the training in AWS? Ah, okay. Training. Iba yung training sa certification itself, ha? Um, may training kung saan, let's say, workshop, pinaabot ng isang, isang linggo. Um, hindi ko alam eh, basta mahal, mahal siya. Or, or may mga training centers na nag-offer nun, package na. May, you can just check out yung mga favorite nyong uh, training centers. Or um, you can actually, for training, you can do it on your own. I mean, there's a lot of um, webs, uh, YouTube, mm. uh, you know, learnings about this. Or you can, meron ding mga katulad ng... Ano ba tawag doon? Cloud Guru or uh, yun. Yes, Pwede yes. They, they, they also have the Udemy, right? 
So you yeah, Udemy, Udemy. Could, you, you can buy, meaning it is an app, you can buy courses online. I think it is only 16 US dollar or 16 SGD dollars. Then it is lifetime na, di ba? So they yes, can yes, explore yes. it. Uh, they can explore it. And then may mga courses din doon preparing you for the certification. So, yun ang cheapest way to have it. Pero if you want a face-to-face, -face, medyo mahal yun. I remember, may na-encounter ako. Uh, Solution Architecture Associate is 4,000 Singapore dollars. That is for five days face-to-face -face session. Okay. Mahal, mahal yan sir. Ako 3,000 yung nag-face-to-face -face ako. Talagang workshop siya isang, isang linggo. Five days ako pupunta sa uh -oh. training center. No? Uh -oh. Ayan ba yung sabi malapit sa ano? Sa Bugis? Ina sa boogies, tama. Oh, uh -oh. Yun. Kinakausap din nila ako, they want to provide discounted rate. Pero mahal pa rin. Sabi ko, oh, I will just relay it to my team. Pero mahal. Ano bang It's tawag sa training mahal. center na yun? Nakalimutan ko. Basta, oh, Nakalimutan medyo ko yung pangalan. Oo, oh, 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 mahal sila maningyel. Pero kung halimbawa sa ano yan, other schools, kasi may subsidy, mas mura. Hey, Jane Mine, sir. Oo, uh -oh, yan. Doon si John nagtitraining. Okay, oh, sige. Mamaya na tayo dyan. Okay, next question. They are, we are transitioning to a cloud for our online enrollment system. What services in AWS should we acquire? Mm, sir? Sorry, what, what are the trans, uh, we are transitioning to cloud? Uh, so, uh, kung, solution solution kung, architect question. <laughs> kung ano ba, kung ano ituturo sa online? No, 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 no. Okay, okay. Ang tanong is ganito. Uh, meron silang on-premise solution, for example, on uh, enrollment system. They want to move this on-premise system to the cloud. Ano yung kailangan nilang i-purchase sa cloud? So, of course, ah. kailangan nila ng EC2, kailangan nila EC2. ng uh, what GPC. database? Is it, uh, is it MongoDB or is it uh, DynamoDB? So, it is solutioning question. That's why I said it is a solution architecture question. Yes. Una, uh, yes, mag yes. muna kayo ng Maghire muna kayo ng solution architect or uh, yun, para mag-design ng an, uh, online enrollment system para sa iyo kung gusto mong gamitin yung cloud. And yung mga services, yes, easy to. Kailangan mo ng server, kailangan mo ng VPC para sa yes. cloud mo. Database. Kailangan din ng, ng yeah. Glacier. Oh, so, kasi archiving, uh, yes. Uh, archiving, yes, tama. Those things, you can check that out. Uh, yes, I, uh, that is question for uh, Ma'am Ellen from uh, USTP. Okay? So, I will answer you in detail siguro later on your, siguro na lang via our personal Yun, conversation na lang. Consulting okay? na sir ah. Uh, oh. Yun, consultation Mag, na. By, by, by charge na yan, hindi na yan free. By charge na. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is AWS mostly for website lang po or uh, ano pa po ang target market niyo po? Actually, AWS is not only website. It is maraming application siya. So, typically, nasa cloud nga lang siya pero you could have online learning. E-commerce, ano pa? Uh, yung thing, uh, ano sir, um, yun nga na-mention ko, robotics. Robotics mo yes. physical siya, pero yung um, yung uh, database mo nasa cloud. So yung mga ganun, yes, pwede, yes. pwede siya application. Correct, correct. Actually, when I am teaching Java 2 sa ICPEP, I created an application, Java, in my laptop, but I am connecting to AWS Kasi ang database ko nasa AWS, my SQL, si SQL mm -hmm. server, my SQL. So I am connecting, I am logging in sa AWS, doon ako kumukuha ng data. So you could do a hybrid. Hindi lang kasi natin sa everything is in the cloud, pwedeng on the premise. Tama? Okay? Yes sir, on so, premise. Pwede, pwede yun, mo rin siyang, yes. mm. pwede mo rin gamitin si Alexa. Si Alexa or uh, mm. you know, yung voice... Uh, Tsaka, basta it's not limited to websites only or e-commerce. Yes, yes. It is not. Uh, marami siya. Meron nga siya yung machine learning, uh, di ba? Uh, Internet of Things. Actually, marami siyang gamit even in the food security, di ba? Mal makikita mo yung broad application niya. Okay? Exactly. Correct, sir. Then, next question. Saan mas save just in case may overflow ng data sa server mo? I don't get the question. Uh, overflow of data. Actually, ang database is uh, ano siya? Nag, uh, ano bang tawag doon, sir? Nag-auto scale siya, di ba? Yung database natin. So, for example, is the DynamoDB, nag-auto scale siya. So, wala kang iisipin kung kakasya ba sa database mo o hindi. So, walang issue doon. You can just think of it na lahat ng possible maging problema sa um, 
uh, operations niyo ng server, lahat dyan may solution sa AWS. You will just have to check it out. So, yun nga, auto-scaling is one way para hindi mag-overflow, mag-overload yung mga uh, services. Auto-scale, meaning ta automatic siyang tumataas yung required resources. Then, pag hindi na, bababa na siya. Mga ganon. Okay? Tama. Then, uh, Ramil, question. Private practitioner, meron bang option na pwede silang mag-practice like free lab? Yes. Gaya nga nang sabi ni Sir, you can create an account in AWS Training Labs. All you need to do is just to key in your credit card and then that's it. You can play all the resources doon sa uh, portal. But make sure you have to terminate yung services after mong gamitin kasi iikot yung metro mo. Okay? It mm -hmm. is a, parang metro taxi. Nakasakay ka, uusag ng uusag yan. So after you utilize the resources, remember to terminate it. Better save it doon sa tinatawag nating ano ba yan? Cloud formation. Tama ba ako, sir? Cloud formation. Ah, yung, uh -uh. You save it to your cloud formation so that later on, you just run again the cloud formation. It will orchestrate all your uh, resources. Tama? Tama, sir. Exactly. Um, okay. And then may mga free tier din si Amazon like um, T2 Micro. It's a free tier. One, bibigyan ka ng 1 gigabyte uh, um, and then CPU for free. Pwede mo siyang i-run uh, for free and then you can just terminate it. Yes. That's just for, right. for okay. training. Okay. Another question here. Uh, certification cost, how much? Actually, uh, nandun to sa website ng AWS. Uh, for example, Solution Architect Associate is 150 US dollar. So the examination is, I think, uh, one hour and thirty minutes online. Ay hindi hindi pala dati face to face. Ngayon I heard sabi nila, Prometric is allowing it to have online exam. So meaning you could take the exam sa bahay mo. Mubabayad ka ng one hundred fifty US dollars. Yes, you have to pay one fifty USD. Pero supang sulit naman siya, and of course before you take the exam, dapat confident ka na and equipped fully equipped ka na para hindi masayang one fifty dollars. Pagkano yun yung peso? Kung $150. Kasi kung $100 is $5,000, siguro mga $75 peso. Something like that. If $50, ah. Okay, next question. Ah, sabi ni Ellen. Ellen is, LMS is, what is it? To be hosted in AWS. Hosting and security are two different services and fees. Built-in siya. Kasi di ba pag nag- ano ka sa AWS? Kasama na yung hosting, di ba, sir? Yes, yung hosting, um, yung maintenance ng mga servers uh, are mm -hmm. being taken care of AWS. Kasama na siya sa billing. Pagdating naman sa security, may mga security features na um, partnering siya ng billing. Like, for example, security group. So, kung mag-filter mag, mag, uh, out ka ng mga IP addresses, libre na yon. Pero kung you mm -hmm. want an advanced security feature like um, sa mga website yung tinatawag na... Uh, Code AWS Shield or ng mga cloud formation, may mga bayad yon. Extra extra layer of defense or extra layer security may 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 corresponding charges yon. So you can check out AWS or you can ask for an architect for consultation. Okay, another question. May Dev and Probe Server division ba sa AWS or we have to get two different servers? Yes, there is a different uh, categories ng servers sa AWS. You have to define it on your own. Kasi during the creation, ikaw magde-define nung server mo whether it is defined as production uh, production or testing. Pero normally, ang gagamitin mo sa development are yung mga free tier lang, di ba? So free tier are less ang, ang kanyang ano, ang resources pero you can use it. Pero yung production, yun na yung mga mahal na specs na babayaran mo talaga. Okay? It so, really I depends upon you. Kung, kung naka, pinari, ito sa pinakita ko, nakalista yung mga servers, you can, you know, put a tag on those mm. servers na ito, ang mga servers na ito ay for development, these are for, for, for production. It's really up to you on how you design it. Um, may, ad, may, uh, may ibang mga company ginagawa yung mga servers nila production na sa US, then yung Uh, developer nila nasa Pilipinas or nasa, nasa Asia, you can, you can, you know, you can play around with that uh, that way. It depends on your requirement and how you gonna uh, benefit, how it will benefit on your company. Mm -mm, correct. Okay, we do have another question. Mas pabilis ba ang access sa data pag migrate sa ano, kami sa database sa cloud? Actually, this is subjective. Kung halimbawa sa Pilipinas, mabagal ang internet, 
Kahit mabilis si AWS, pagdating mo sa internet sa Pilipinas mabagal, then it's no point. So, it depends. Kung ang magandang infrastructure sa area ninyo, then mabilis si AWS. Pero kung ang problema mo is infrastructure, I suggest, ang database mo on-premise, ang application mo na lang ilagay mo sa cloud. Yun. There's so, so many factors. Hmm, hmm, uh, you just have to really consider um, having, kung, kung hindi man ikaw ang AWS professional, at least hire one, or kung ikaw mismo, uh, you're learning AWS, you, you want to become an architect or become a consultant before, then you should be able to know how to migrate or the uh, the most efficient way to migrate your data to cloud. Uh, may session question then, what is the most challenging area of being a DevOps professional? I think sa simula, magiging challenging siya um, on how you, you transform yourself to be a de uh, DevOps. But I tell you, once you become, you, you see yourself as a DevOps confident already, then the, the result is very rewarding. And uh, the less uh, the less you become, you encounter challenges kapag isa ka ng DevOps professional. Sa simula lang siya mahirap. Um, and then pag confident ka na, wala nang hirap. Hindi <laughs> na siya masyado mahirap. Oh, kasi na-practice mo na siya. Uh, actually, so actually, actually, we do have one engineer here in the group. I think nandyan si Sir Gilbert. Sir Gilbert Cabral, you there? Can you share something? Test here? <laughs> oh, oh, kasi actually, he is a certified DevOps engineer. <laughs> Sir Gilbert, are you there? Nandyan ba siya? Asan si Sir? Baka? Hello, Sir. Ayon, si Sir. Actually, a certified DevOps engineer. So, Sir, can you give us some, ano, dito sa question na to, challenging area of, become, of being a DevOps professional? No, yeah, actually, the DevOps is uh, actually yeah, as 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 per um, Sir McCoy, the DevOps is a culture actually. So if you embrace the more on the programming side, and also you need to learn more on the infrastructure also. So it's a it's a it's a blended learning for infrastructure, OS, and programming. So those are the key areas and key points that you have to master. Mm. Kaya it is very essential, lalo na sa CPE uh, program, kasi we are diverse. Meaning, meron tayong hardware, meron tayong software, meron ding infrastructure. Now, we do have cloud security and everything and so on, di ba? May machine learning, may deep learning. So, internet of things. Everything is there. So, kaya magandang isama itong mga diniscuss natin sa curriculum din. Yeah. Any other question? Any other question, guys? Aking mga peers dyan sa ICPEP from Region 1 to 12. Ma'am Gina, Region 3, any question? Sir Dion from uh, Car Region. Oh, may tanong, sir. What is the difference of full-stack developer sa ka DevOps? I think um, full stack developer is under DevOps. Again, DevOps is still a culture. So, marami siyang, um, marami siyang kino cover as a DevOps. So, si DevOps ang pinakataas at under niya ang full stack developer. Pag sinabing full stack developer, yun yung um, isang whole package ka na uh, pag, uh, being, being, isang, being a developer. So, marunong ka nang mag code at the same time, marunong kang um, mag deploy ng application mo marunong ka mag-install ng mga um, tools mo. So, basically, you are a DevOps if you are a full-stack developer. Okay. So, may another question. Do they separate pricing for educational institution like SAP? Uh, ito ay hindi ko alam. <laughs> hindi ko rin alam yan. <laughs> Sir Dayan, we can check it with AWS. Actually, hindi ko rin siya alam kasi alam ko may mga license for educational institution, iba yon. Then may license then for enterprise. So, for this case, uh, I don't see any information yet but we can check with AWS. Yeah. But this is AWS a very sales. good question. Yes. Kasi maganda to if we can push this one to schools and universities so para maging industry ready ang mga bata. Kasi ngayon, yes. yung natutunan natin dati na computer engineering, laging naiisip mo, technician ang tingin nila. But we are not a technician, we are an engineer. We develop an enterprise solution. So, from initial to 
deployment up to maintenance and support. So, very complex na ngayon ang computing, uh, ang computer engineering. So, kailangan nating i-cover lahat yun. And then at the same time, I just want to share with you, we will going to have another talk, Cloud Den, pero ito ay Azure, which is sure. under the Windows, Microsoft Windows. Yeah, tama ba ako? Tama po. Uh, uh. So, we will schedule it uh, siguro in the coming weeks. And then I'm also talking with IBM if they can provide a talk on IBM Cloud. Para meron lang kayong idea about these three big cloud provider. So, ano bang meron kay AWS? Anong meron kay Azure? At anong meron kay IBM? Okay? So, yun lang yung aking ina-arrange so far. So, just keep in touch sa aming group. Okay? Uh, any other question, guys? Sir Ryan, excuse me lang. Yes. For, mm. ano to ha? For, for, uh, to, ano? Kanina question about uh, the difference between. Me alam ko for different cloud providers. Kapag education, they have different pricing schemes also because yung sa side ng ng Azure, it's yung sa side mm. namin. Kasi because uh, bundled yung sa amin with Office 365, we have. Ah, yes, 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 sir. Uh, for a moment, sir, can you introduce yourself to them that you are connected to a educational institution in Singapore and doing some stuff about this? Para alam lang nila. Okay. Um. Uh, hi guys. I'm uh, John. I'm. Uh, I just uh, a while ago. I'm VP for education. Um. I'm currently as a uh, working as systems engineer, one of the private institutions here in Singapore. Um. Kami, it's uh, more on. Ang akin kasi is more on the server and the cloud side, but mostly I'm handling the the change yung email at saka yung SharePoint right now. Yung for education, right, alam ko they have different pricing model for, for education on uh, if you want to subscribe with them. Also for enterprise, separate then yung uh, subscription. So if you're going to dapat uh, contact nyo lang yung account manager for education so that they can provide you with education price also. I see, I see. Okay, so meaning meron kay uh, Azure, okay? But for AWS kasi, even on the website, I don't see any. So maybe we could check it with AWS consultant, okay? Mm -hmm. 